We would agree that staying the course here is the best option because it is very hard to time the market. I would mention too, you know, I would agree with Tony that yes, we have seen a global economic recovery begin to transpire, obviously been fueled by tons of stimulus. We're likely to get more. Obviously, the timing of that is in question now in the U.S., but it will come, just a question of when and in what exactly what form. Uh, but I'd also mention that there is so much cash sitting on the sidelines, and I think a lot of cash that wasn't invested uh, earlier in the year has stayed out of the market with concerns over the election in the second half of the year. So I think to the extent that we get through that and that some of that cash is redeployed, it could be pretty powerful in the market. Joe, BTIG today says, and I'm quoting now, Why it is, while it is difficult for us to fathom how any incumbent dare face the voters without having passed new stimulus, Tuesday's events open up the possibility, the potential for immediate downside to the S&P 200-day moving average, which is 3113, reinforces the idea that the outcome of the election is likely to be unclear, contested, or both. How do you play that? I, I don't think we challenge a 200-day moving average unless we have a very strong, contested, delayed election. Um, I think we've already seen that movie in the month of September, Scott. I think we're in a range right now. I think it's deja vu all over again, as Yogi Berra once said. Just go back to one year and think about the tweets that the president were putting out as it related to increasing tariffs on the Chinese. We went through a period in August, September, and October that markets kind of just were spinning around in one place while the president did that, and ultimately you got phase one, which lifted the markets. The markets needed distraction. I know, I know, get I know, Joe. I know, I know. You, I, I, I'm going to argue a little bit with with the, the premise that the, you know, okay, well, he's tweeted like this before, um, so just you know, ignore it because the market's gotten over it before. Um, you have people trying to put food on the table. You have businesses that are in danger of going bankrupt in the interim while all of this is going on with no stimulus. The real question here is, uh, if there is no stimulus, what happens to the stock market? Well, you're asking me two different questions because your first question really is a societal impact as it relates to the economy, and I absolutely agree with you. I think there's challenges for people right now who have no ability to even invest in the stock market. Uh, as it relates to what the impact on the stock market is, we're going to have an election. There's going to be a, hopefully, a result from that election. And in the scenario where there's not a result, then the market is going to have a problem. The market is going to decline. But having a result of the election is going to move the country forward and we're going to be able to shine a light on really what are the prevailing uh, tailwinds right now, which is this dramatic global liquidity. And it is the technology component which is powering the economy. So for the stock market itself, as I said, it's a period where it's a distraction, certainly. Six days from today, you're going to get earnings. Hopefully, that's going to allow investors to look away from what is a distraction and focus on things that matter, which is are we witnessing earnings growth which was certainly the catalyst in the month of July and August for the market. I can't believe we're, we're going to be talking, Steve, about earnings coming up. I mean, there's been so much other stuff going on <laughs> that we forget we're going to get these earnings reports coming up in the, in the near future. Not to mention the fact that, as Art Cashin said today, part, maybe 20 percent in his estimation, maybe it's more, maybe it's less, of today's move in the market is due to positive news on the COVID front, at least in terms of treatments, therapeutics, and a race towards the vaccine. Lilly had some pretty good news today. So as Joe says, Fed stimulus is always in the background. I mean, the Fed is always in the background because that's holding up the floor of everything. And then if you get progression towards therapeutics and treatments, it's hard to be negative the, the market if you get, as you get closer towards the end of the year and the finish line in the great race. Yeah, I think that's right. And so the market tends to be optimistic. We see that no clearer than today where you have over 40 states reporting a spike. Boston schools are now closed. And parts of New York City are now closed. The market's not paying any attention to that. What they're paying attention to is that, yes, we got more news on, on, on not on a vaccine, but on a treatment today. We'll get the vaccine news coming out in the next month or so. So that's what it's looking forward to. And talking about the economy, though, the economy is not improving in the U.S. As a matter of fact, it's declining. 
So we've seen those numbers come out. So I do have concerns about the earnings season in terms of where you are. So what I come down to, the bottom line is that the optimism will control. We're still not going to get guidance on the next quarter from the majority of the companies reporting. So valuation remains on a holiday. But when you talk about cash on the sidelines, think about it this way. Even though you've seen the 10-year yield move up, inflation adjusted, it's negative. And if rates do move up, you're going to have to wait 10 years to get recapture all of your capital on a 10-year bond while essentially paying the government for that privilege. So equities is where you're going to go. The question is, where do you go in equities? And much like the economy, sad to say, where the wealth gap is increasing to a much greater extent from the points that you made before, you've got the same thing with the haves and have-nots in the market. So positioning is the critical aspect.